Hey, this is part two of our look at emotions, and we're looking at emotions and how your body um, responds and is affected and helps affect your emotions. So the first thing that we'll talk about is emotional arousal. If you remember back from biopsychology, you have your uh, autonomic nervous system. So autonomic, remember, means automatic, so it happens without any conscious thought. It just naturally happens. And so when you have an emotionally arousing event, uh, certain things happen, right? Your autonomic nervous system works. You have your autonomic, remember your autonomic, autonomic was divided into your sympathetic over here and then your thetic and then your parasympathetic over here, right? And the sympathetic was your fight or flight type um, system. It, Increases things when we're, as we look here in the chart, and your parasympathetic was more of your calming. And so, some things that the sympathetic nervous system does when you're experiencing some emotions to physically happen to your body, right? Your pupils dilate, your salivation decreases, you start to perspire, sweat, you have increased respiration, your heartbeat accelerates, your digestion slows down, and then your adrenal, gland, adrenal glands secrete hormones, right? And then basically, the parasympathetic does the opposite of that, right? You don't want um, you don't want to be processing and digesting a lot of food when you're in a danger situation, right? Because that requires a lot of blood, that requires um, energy from your body to digest that food. You want to be having all your full resources ready to to fight. Um, so it's kind of like a crisis control center. And um, but what's what's interesting is that a highly emotional responses um, are interpreted or can, can be can be the same type of feeling but just depends on how you interpret them to decide what emotion you're going to have. So there's not much difference physiologically between like being elatedly excited and having panicky fear. They're very similar physically emotions, right? Because they're both your sympathetic nervous system is both going and it's doing all of these things, right? So you have the same responses from your body when you're really fearful and when you're really excited. And so how you interpret those things, remember when we talked about the cannon bard uh, theory of emotion and whatnot, how you interpret those things can determine you know, what your emotion is. Um, a personal example, right? My son Eli will go, he'll be really ticked off, like changing his diaper or something cry freaking out and then like you'll tickle his feet or something and then all of a sudden he's just cracking up right so he's going from being just completely pissed off to on the drop of a hat he's just laughing uncontrollably and so it's the same like physiological response in the body and so he'll be like screaming or crying and then all of a sudden he's just laughing right? so without even without even changing and skipping a beat and that's the example where right? he's just labeling those emotions which he doesn't quite know how to handle yet and labeling it a different way all right, uh, something that's sometimes not in uh, psychology texts is like one of the bold on the side. It's kind of an important idea is um, this what's called the spillover effect. And so the spillover effect is when you have an emotional, or I'm sorry, a physiologically arousing uh, event. So for instance, either you're working out or you've just watched this crazy uh, competitive soccer game or something where you're just physiologically aroused, right? It could be... Um, and then afterwards, because you're already physically aroused, you're more likely to interpret events afterwards in a stronger or more different uh, way. So for instance, like after watching a soccer game, right, people often, not often, but it happens more often than you would think, will start rioting, like after watching this really competitive soccer game, right? And so they take this excitement that they have at the soccer game and it spills over into like anger or uh, something like that. Um, so say uh, another example is say somebody who just got through working out at the gym and then you insult them they're much more likely to take uh, that in insult as uh, extreme provocation than somebody who just woke up from a nap so it depends on the spillover effect can work work and spill over to other events and since your body's already physiologically aroused right Remember, you've got to place a label on that physiological arousal. If you think that physiological arousal is because somebody just insulted you, you're going to interpret that, and your emotion might be more angry uh, than it might otherwise be. So um, that's 
emotion and your body. And uh, we'll talk about something else next time. Thanks.